What's up everybody, NFX here with another tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to sample your own drums out of an existing MP3 or WAV file. Now obviously this is something that um, producers and beat makers have been doing in hip hop since the very beginning. So I'm going to show you how to do it in FL Studio and it's very easy. Now I, I, I am assuming that you already have either a WAV file or an MP3 or you know how to create those from either CD or vinyl because you will need to get the song that you want to sample from in digital format. And what I'm talking about as far as sampling right now is sampling the drums only. In other words, how to make a drum kit from a song or a bunch of songs uh, and just grab the drum sounds out of it. To begin, uh, we need a song, obviously. Um, but let's start by opening up Edison. Now I have a an empty project here. I'm going to start Edison by clicking the button on the toolbar that looks like the uh, scissors chopping up a squiggly line. And that's going to bring up Edison. For this tutorial, I'm going to shrink Edison down just so it looks a little better when I zoom into it. And now all, all I have to do is drag my MP3 or WAV file into Edison. Let me bring up a folder where I have my file. Here it is. Uh, average white band is the uh, band, it's called Big City Lights. I'm going to drag it and drop it into Edison. Now, this particular song is sampled from vinyl, so it's going to have some of the scratchy quality of a vinyl record, which is fine. Um, but now you can see it's loaded into Edison, and the part I want to grab, I already know where it is. It's at the very beginning. Um, so make sure you listen to these songs before you put them into Edison so you kind of have an idea where where the samples are and if you even if they even have any any drums that you want to grab out of them. But I'm going to select the beginning and then I'm going to hit <clears throat> the end key and Edison's going to zoom into the part that I selected. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and play the first couple bars of the song just so you can hear what it sounds like and then you'll understand where the drums are that I want to that I want to capture. So it's that first bar you can hear there's just a, a basic uh, drum pattern. It's a kick, hat, snare, hat, kick, hat, snare type of thing. Um, but it starts right here. So I'm going to double click and using my mouse I'm going to point to this area that I want to zoom into and then using the mouse wheel I'm going to zoom into it. I want to zoom into it till it there's enough of it on the screen that I feel like I can select the start point pretty accurately. If it's zoomed out and I try to select the start point chances are I'm going to get a little bit more than I need. But you can do that as a starting point if you want. Then you can zoom into it by using the mouse wheel or the end key on your keyboard. But you can see the part I've selected, there's a little bit of silence at the beginning. And, and we really don't want that when we're sampling drums. Because we want the drums to hit right away uh, when we need to use them. So I'm going to use this to drag the start position to right there to where you see that little blip start up. Where it's flat is generally silence. And I want it right there. The end part, I can trim some of that ending off because the end part is not quite as important as the beginning although you don't want to end it too early like I wouldn't want to end it here because I'd end up getting a very short incomplete kick sound so I'm gonna make sure I get it until it turns into approximately silence again I'm gonna zoom out and then I'm gonna hit the play button here in Edison and you'll hear this isolated piece So there it is. It's the kick with some uh, open hat on top of it, but that's okay. Um, now, the next thing I want to do is I want to name that, make a region out of that and give it a name. So I'm going to hit Alt-M, and it's going to ask me what the region name is. Um, now, everybody is going to want to name these things differently. I urge you to come up with some kind of a way of doing it so it makes it easy when you're browsing to know what you're dealing with. For example, if it's a kick drum, you might want to add the word kick to it or 
Some people use BD for bass drum. I like to use just a K. So I'm going to use K dash. That way when I'm in my browser, I'll know right away that's a kick. And then I'm going to give it a name and I'll call it City uh, 1. And the reason why I called it City is because the song name is Big City Lights. And the reason why I gave it a 1 is because I happen to know there's another kick drum that I want to sample and I'll call it City 2. And I'm going to hit enter and you can see it's made the region for me, the start and end markers, and it's given it the name. And uh, I'm going to zoom out. The other kick I wanted is, is actually over here, this area. And it sounds su sufficiently different that I want to capture both of those kicks. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, select around the area. And I, you notice I'm selecting a little bit more than I need. And I'm going to hit the end key just to zoom into it. Then I'm going to trim off the beginning, capture that, and I'm going to trim off the end, like so. I'll zoom out, we'll hit play. Always hit play to audition your selection, because you never know if you've gotten too much or too little. Always, uh, it's a good idea. Hit play when you're happy with it. Go ahead and Alt-M again. We'll give this one a name of K for kick, and we'll call it City 2, enter. You'll notice that it doesn't say City 2 in this particular region. And the reason is we are zoomed out enough that it, it won't fit. But if we zoom in, you'll see it, it will appear. And uh, we can zoom out. And now we're going to go ahead and pick uh, a snare, which is this sound here. So let me double click and draw an area. Now double clicking, well, you see I have the area here. If I just single click, let's say way over here, you'll see the the endpoint slides on over. Double clicking resets the begin and end point. See, I just double clicked. Now I can start and do my drag where I need to. So I'm going to do that. Hit end again to zoom into that selected area. Tweak my starting point again. Get it as close to the beginning of that sample as I can. Tweak my ending point somewhat. Then I like to zoom out just so that the display doesn't scroll when I preview it, but I'm going to preview it. Sounds pretty clean and complete, so I'm going to hit Alt-M. And Now this is a snare. My naming, I go S dash for snare, and then we'll call it City. Enter. Now there's one more sample in here I want to get. It's a, uh, it's a hat, which is somewhere in the middle of between this kick and this snare. And if I select this area, you'll hear it in here. And it also exists over here. And maybe this is a better candidate actually over here. But you'll notice when I zoom into it, there's not much there for me to see the actual peak. I mean, yeah, I can eyeball it and tell you it probably starts about right here. But I can do something to help me get that a little bit better. I can amplify that section. Now, you don't want to normalize it, because if you normalize, it's going to make it super loud and super big, and it's not going to sound that great when you go to use it, or you're going to have to remember to turn it down or, or something. But by amplifying it by a little bit or doubling it, it's not going to make it that much bigger, but it'll make it big enough that I can find my points pretty accurately. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Alt-A with that region select. Now, I know I've selected a little bit more than I need at the beginning and a little bit more than I need at the end. And that's okay because we'll trim it out in a second. So I'm going to hit Alt-A. And then when the amp window comes up, you want to deal with this parameter right here, this LR. This means it's going to amplify the left and right together. And you want that all the way up to start with. Now, if it's too much, you can always undo it and 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 reduce it a little bit, but all the way over is going to do it by 200%, which basically doubles the, uh, the volume. When I do that, you can see now it's a lot easier for me to see the area of this uh, hi-hat. And I'm going to go ahead and set the start where I think it needs to go, and I'm going to go ahead and set the end. And let's take a, an audition of this. So it sounds pretty good. Alt-M to name the region. And uh, we'll call this one uh, H for hat. And this is a closed hat. 
So I'm going to add the C. HC means it's a hat closed, dash, and then we'll call it city. Okay, so now when I zoom out, I can see that I've got four good regions defined. I've got two kicks, a snare, and a hat. So that's good enough for now. Um, now I, I want to export all these. So what I'm going to do is go to the file menu here and say export regions as. And then it's going to come up. It's going to ask me where do I want to put it. In this case, I'm going to put it in an area where it's already hooked into my browser. And then it's going to ask me for a file name. And this is what it's going to add to the beginning of the file name. So in this case, I'll just call this AWB for average white band. And then I'll hit save. Now, it did its business really fast because we only have a few samples defined here. But if I wanted to, I could load in another MP3, mark up where I want my samples, export them, and keep doing this. Um, you know, till I'm till I'm bored with it or, or, or done with it. But uh, let me show you where the samples are now. And in my case, like I said, I put it into a place that's in my browser. You can see here I have a area in my browser that says NFX sampled. Uh, I'm going to hit this refresh button up here just to make sure it rereads the uh, the directory. And if I look in here, there it is, AWB, and then I've got my hat closed, my kick one, kick two, and my snare. Okay, now I can go ahead and use these like I would any other samples. Now, by the way, if you're wondering how I did this and put this in my browser, you need to watch a tutorial I did on organizing your sounds and samples. Search Warbeats or search YouTube or some other video place for that one. That'll tell you how to get your library here on this uh, browser window, which makes it much easier when you just want to drag your sounds over. So now I can, uh, let's say, take my kick. That's the first kick. Let's listen to the difference, by the way, between these two kicks. You can hear the second one has a little bit less of that hat sound in it, which is why I wanted to get both of them. But let's go ahead and drag these over. And now I have my three sounds there. And... Uh, I'll just use them like this. Actually, the snare is here. And slow down the tempo a little bit. So you can see now I can I can use this um, these sounds as however I want. And you could tweak them further if you wanted, obviously. You know, uh, Edison has a lot of ways of... Uh, you know, equalizing, reversing, uh, whatever, you know, so you can really get creative and, and make all kinds of cool sounds out of it. You could even maybe record yourself beatboxing and then cut out your individual drum hits from the beatboxing or something like that. You, it's unlimited, the potential of what you can do. But for this tutorial, that's all I wanted to show you. So there you go. So now that you know how to Grab those drums from your various uh, record collection or MP3 collection. You know, go ahead, make some kits, get some good drum sounds. You know, uh, if you feel generous, package them up, share them on uh, online. You know, if you want to upload them to Warbeat and put your name on it as your kit, go right ahead, do that. Um, we'll be glad to uh, host the file there and and let people download them, and. Uh, and your name will be on it, and everyone will know that uh, you know what you're doing. But in the meantime, uh, this is NFX saying, I'll catch you guys in the next tutorial.